Guys, Clips Channel, at least four new clips a day, Palpatine approved. Go check it out, link in the description. So guys, if you're familiar with the channel, you'll know I spent a lot of time talking about the original Lego Star Wars and the complete saga and the new up and coming Skywalker saga. But one Lego game I've only made a few videos about is this one, Lego Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars, released in 2011. Highly underrated Lego game, entirely based on the Clone Wars TV series. Sure, the game didn't reach the same heights as the originals, but recently I've gone back and played a bit, and man, is it fun! How many games can you kill your friends in the elevator in? Not many, this is one of them. <laughs> and like all other Lego games, The Clone Wars features a lot of content that was cut from the final game, the deleted levels, and that is exactly what I've got to show you today. There's so much content content that was cut from the game early into development that would have made this even bigger and better than it already is, which is pretty huge at the time of release. I'm pretty sure this game's hub world was the largest in any LEGO game. So here are 18 unused levels in LEGO Star Wars 3 The Clone. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. <laughs> so all these levels I'm showing you today were filmed and extracted from the game files by my battle droid buddy, Roger Roger. Heaps more Lego content on his channel. I'll leave a link to that in the description. First level is called Castle of Deception A. Now, for some of you Clone Wars junkies out there, you might recognize this name. Originally, the Clone Wars film was divided into three episodes with similar titles, originally meant to form a trilogy. They were called Castle of Deception, Castle of Doom, and Castle of Salvation. Salvation. There is a level in LEGO Clone Wars called Castle of Doom, which is a bonus level where you play as Dooku on Tatooine, but Castle of Deception here was supposed to be like the Republic's perspective of Castle of Doom, and you play through the Battle of Teth. You can see here you could play as Obi-Wan and a clone trooper who is actually an unused character. You can't play as this specific clone in the actual game. In the game files, he's actually called A-Wing Pilot for some reason, even though this is many years before the Rebel Alliance was even formed. Just looks like a normal clone trooper though, doesn't he? But this level seems to be really similar to those large scale RTS battles that made this game stand out from the originals. That's what made this game unique and they were trying to go bigger and better with the battles. So you were actually gonna be able to play the Battle of Teth. It was gonna be part of the game and that's what this is here, the large scale battle from the Clone Wars film. Although it was cut pretty early in development as this is all that's really left from the battle, just a bunch of giant bubble shields and textures. But there is this giant door here and if we move up to it, we're taken inside to Castle of Deception B the second unused level. But it's pretty bare bones. This was possibly a section where you'd fight waves of droidicas. As there's this one static droidica just sitting here. Hey man, what's up? Oh, nothing much. Just waiting for the devs to finish this level. Uh, they aren't finishing it, man. This game is like 10 years old. Oh wait, no, no, my reality is ruined. Normal battle droids talk. Why don't, why don't droidicas say anything? They're like the silent assassins of the Clone Wars. And then we come to Castle of Deception C, the final stage of the Battle of Teth, which is basically just this giant empty room and possibly where Anakin and Ahsoka run away from Ventress in the film. Now prepare for the greatest scene in any LEGO Star Wars game ever. Windu, Yoda, Palpatine presses the button, enter Jar Jar the General. <laughs> Oh boy, what a what an entrance. This is an early version of the Gungan General level, which appears in the final game. And we also have an early version of one of the rooms from Gungan General, and here you can play as Commander Stone. I like the paint job on his arm. This guy should have had more screen time. It just appears in the one Clone Wars episode and that's it. Did he die? I don't remember. And then there's also an early version of the larger Gungan General level, where you go save Anakin and Obi-Wan from Hondo and Akka on Florum. And you can see here, they haven't even leveled the ground yet because we've got some advanced floating droid technology Look at it up in the sky there. Also, this is a much greener version of Florum, which is actually a lot more sandy. This is great. This is before the great drought. Aussie viewers, you know what I'm talking about, hey? <laughs> live in a goddamn desert. All right, next up, we have the unused level called Hub Assault, which was likely a level used to test the game's large scale battle mode. But if that's the case, then why is this level called Hub Assault? Because that name suggests there was originally an idea to be randomly attacked in the hub and then to be entered into this Hub Assault mode, kind of like what the Skywalker Saga is doing with random events in the open world. That's just a wild guess though. There's not much here apart from the giant empty arena. Next up, we have the Venator Demo Hub, which is much more detailed and impressive. So this place is interesting because it's entirely different to the Venator Hub in the final game, which looks like this, and seems to be a test or demo level. It's possible 
possible this was made by the developers to show the game off at early marketing events or behind the scenes kind of stuff. The central control panel can be used to select a bunch of different levels and the panel over on the right can select a bunch more early levels and there's also this panel with the green screen and this one does nothing. Even though it looks like the most interesting one in the room. <laughs> And you can actually make your way into the main Resolute hub world from here, which is the name of the Venero the hub world exists on. But this hub world doesn't actually appear in the final game at all. You can't go here, it makes no appearance. So it's pretty special. Next, a level called Builder Bowling, which is basically just a dark, empty room. Scary stuff. Oh gosh, don't turn the lights out again, please. No. <laughs> There's a few of these movable building blocks, which as far as I know, don't actually appear in the final game. They're only in this one room, in this dark, dark, scary room. Look at all the black. There's a lot of black, pitch black. This next one's called Builder Grievous, which is a random floating platform with some flappy tentacles. Oh, this is some horror movie stuff. Look at the tentacle, my goodness. Dark room and tentacles. No, thank you. All right, here we go. This one's more interesting. Builder Grievous Parts. There's a bunch of hanging General Grievous body parts. Ooh, which allow you to build your own General Grievous. Available now from your nearest Lego retailer. <laughs> but yeah, you can destroy these and stop the General before he was even born. Seriously, this like would allow you to build multiple General Grievous though, interesting stuff. Builder Hub Space is next, which is super glitch. <laughs> What happened to the clone? Look, there's a giant gold brick. Finally, I can collect these, yes. But the best thing about it, you can play as Indiana Jones's whip. You can actually control the whip and become, embody the whip. There's a bunch of other random shapes and objects here, some of which you can destroy. Next up is Builder Hub Space Art 2. An endless nightmare of falling, dying, and respawning. Seriously, these dev levels are dangerously creepy. It's like a horror movie. For Lego characters, this is the equivalent of hell. Spawn, die, spawn. Spawn, fall, die, repeat. Ever wanted to pick up colored 3D shapes with the force? Then build a weapons factory is the level for you. But yeah, this is basically a room for testing these switches and force interactables. Look here, it's every possible button and lever you can press and pull in the game. This one's called Builder Default, but it also features what I think are a bunch of floating lightsabers or blaster bolts. Kylo Ren is just force freezing somewhere nearby, having a tantrum, taking his shirt off. You know what Kylo's like. I think it's pretty cool seeing all in one place just how many different interactable elements there are in the game. Look, you can slice a circle in space. Also some major jankiness here. Then we have Builder Hub 1, which is pretty similar to the last place. Oh my gosh, Indiana Jones's whip is back. It's my favorite character, Tex String Error. <laughs> Yes, finally unlocked him. And look, more panels and stuff you can interact with. Early dev levels, you know? As soon as we spawn into Builder Hub 3, all this stuff just explodes. And the whip is here again. Seriously, is this like some dev joke at TT Games? Hey guys, let's put the Indiana Jones whip in every game. Great idea, team. Employee of the month. And then Builder Hub 4, another completely random test level with some platforming and destructible objects. But as you can see, lots going on behind the scenes in these LEGO games. It sucks we never got to play the Battle of Teth and they never finished this and a couple of these other levels, but that's just part of game development. Got to go through and replay this. I don't think I've ever played the bonus levels in this as well, so I got to go do that. Maybe I'll make some videos about that. Is that something you'd want to see? I've also made a few more videos like this one about other LEGO games, so you can check them out here. Lots more deleted content. And for more LEGO Star Wars, check out the Clips channel and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and join my Discord for the latest on the Skywalker Saga news as soon as it drops and everything else. And thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew. I'll catch you soon. <laughs> Stay bombastic.